Coming to you live, it's the Auto Hub Show with Ian and Jeff. Here we go. So what would your dealership feel like if your entire sales staff was literally on fire, your sales and service staff? They were nonstop all over social media, completely dominating your marketplace. They could do it in 30 days or less and then continue their education to do it for an entire six months or a year. You literally would completely take over the entire marketplace and no one would be able to compete with you. And that's what we can do for you. So when you're walking around your community, whether you're at local restaurants or you're going to the gym, if you don't want to be bothered, fine, you won't be bothered. But a lot of people will walk up to you and say, oh my God, I love your social media. Your staff is amazing. We love what you're doing in the community. We want to come buy a car from you. We want to get an oil change at your dealership. Your community is absolutely going to Love you and it doesn't matter what platform you're on you could be on TikTok, linkedin facebook instagram all social media platforms you will literally be all over the place i've traveled all over north america i've trained toyota i've trained nissan i've been to driving sales i've been to women in auto i get hired as a speaker for conferences at universities all over the country and i can help change the trajectory of your dealership right now if you click on the link you can sign up for our webinar it's live with me and you'll learn the seven strategies that you need at your dealership in order to see that success. Hi, everyone. This is Paul Brobson, the CEO over at Trusted Sale. And if you don't know Larry Feldman at Career Changers, boy, are you missing out. Now, what are you missing, you might ask? Well, for starters, you're missing the world's best trainer. But seriously, what makes Larry a great trainer is how engaged he keeps his audience. Um, I was at a store recently while Larry was conducting training. Um, and let me tell you, nobody wanted to leave that room. I mean, even when they needed a bio break, they wanted to stick around and hear what Larry had to say. The great late Jim Valvano, who said, to me, there are three things everyone should try to do every day. Number one is laugh. Uh, number two is think. Spend some time in thought every day. And number three, you should have your emotions move you to tears. If you laugh, think, and cry, that's a heck of a day. Well, I can tell you, it's Larry's going to make you laugh. He's going to make you think. And yeah, every once in a while, he's going to make you shed a tear or two. Um, but one thing I can say, it's a heck of a day when Larry comes to visit. But wait, there's more. There is? Yeah. Not only is Larry a great trainer, but he's also one hell of a recruiter. So if you need people in your dealership, I mean anyone, you need technicians, salespeople, managers, BDC agents, whatever you need, Larry can get you staffed right with the right people and do it fast. Ways to improve. Every month we want to improve better on what we did the month before, maybe the year before. It's about how fast we can get the cars done with quality work to get it to the front line because that's where we make our money. And the bottom line is the longer it takes, the more money you spend. We want to get it down as low as possible. Right now, I like I said, we're in a great stage. We're at four and a half days. In recon, we want to know how quickly we can get the cars out of the recon process and to their front line. The average days in recon, and then the time to the line of the NIST equipment thing to be get to. I'm Mike Burrell, I'm service director of JM Lexis. So this is Ian and Larry Feldman. And Larry subbing in. Larry subbing in for Jeff because Jeff's not at the show. We're at SEMA 2023, and we're here with PJ. Yep, PJ Leslie with Techmetric. He's a head of business development. Head of business, whatever that means. It means in-person marketing, I think, is what it is. But head of business development for Techmetric. No problem. So PJ, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about Techmetric, what you do, and sort of who your customers are and who your potential customers are. Yeah, sure. So uh, we're a shop management software company, and um, so that is you know writing up repair estimates, um, appointment scheduling. Uh, text messaging back and forth with the customer, managing the communication, the transactional communication. Um, digital inspections, man, I just can't reiterate that enough to every shop owner that you know watches this and listens to it. If you're not doing those, just do it tomorrow. I hope you do business with us, but do it with somebody because it's creating that trust and transparency in an industry that we've kind of been shrouded for so long. 
Um, you know, everybody's got that brothers, cousins, sisters, uncles, friend who had a bad experience at a shop. They tried to sell them something that they didn't understand. Those digital inspections are just such a game changer in this industry. Um, so we have fully incorporated digital inspections, labor guide, parts ordering, and we also now have um, fully incorporated and, and integrated uh, uh, um, payment tool. So credit card payments, credit card processing with now consumer financing, and the consumer financing has really taken off. Um, we're seeing about three times the average transaction when a customer can finance that uh, purchase at the repair shop as opposed to our, our average credit card swipe. So yeah, end to end, once that customer gets there, we're trying to manage that uh, customer experience from end to end. Sure I understand this. You're making it easier for the shops yep. and you're making it easy for the customers. Absolutely. Tech metric, how are yep. you gonna go wrong? So you mean before that people weren't doing work because they couldn't afford to make one payment, is that what you mean? Absolutely, so um, there was a study done last year by a company called MailShark, really love these guys, and MailShark, they, they did a survey of 10,000 customers, 43% of them responded that they could not afford a repair over $500. Um, so we're really seeing that kind of uptick, and same thing, if I went and shopped for white shirts tomorrow, you'd find white shirts are $100, or for easy payments of 250 bucks, right, or, or $25. And so that's what we're seeing, the, the average consumer being conditioned to purchase right we may not shop that way but there's a whole subset of, of, of consumers that are buying that way and we want to offer them that option if you're willing to pay 250 times four for a hundred dollar shirt i have a bunch <laughs> of shirts to show you we may have to let him out a little hey, i've been in sales and marketing for a while i'm not a math guy okay no. <laughs> i think he just bumped us yeah yeah just a, a slight upsell slight upsell so uh how easy is it to get set up with the software and what kind of roi can a dealer uh, expect or, or an invent shop yeah, so fear of change is the biggest thing we're up against. I don't even, I tell people all the time, we don't compete with our competitors. We do on some level, but it, it really boils down to fear of change. And everyone had this bad experience, you know, three, five, ten years ago, whenever it was the last time they switched softwares. And today it's so different, right? Steve Jobs didn't show up to teach me how to use an iPhone when I bought it. And it's just intuitive. It's simple. I go to the phone icon or I go to the messages icon to learn how to use it. So we built our software to be very intuitive. And that helps people adopt very, very quickly. We always hear it's so much, it was so much scarier in my head than it was in real practice. Can I, can I quote Ben Frank on my hero? Please. When you're finished changing, you're finished. That's accurate. And that's what, that's what we see. This industry has been, you know, oh, my grandfather did it this way. My dad did it this way. I'm going to continue doing it this way. I'm like, these aren't your dad or your granddad's customers. And they expect more. So usually... Day one is tough, day two is easier, by day five you can train a new service advisor. So it's not that big and scary as you think it is. Number two, we also do migrate from well over 100 different softwares on the market. So we can migrate that customer data, vehicles that have come to you in the past, and almost all of them, I shouldn't say all of them, most of them, we can migrate the, the posted repair order history so you can see what you did before on your old system. It's given independent shops a chance to catch up with the big framework of the bigger dealerships, with the difference being Less cost, I'm sure. Absolutely. And, and it just makes more sense. And most important, it's making it easier. Because if you don't mind me speaking out of turn, a customer that's going to an independent shop is thinking it's going to be less expensive. Now, that may or may not be true, but perception is reality. And if they're offering financing, that's the key to everything. Could you imagine how few things would get sold in this economy if you had to pay cash for them? Yep. Understand. So you work mostly with the independent dealers? Is that your story of target market? Correct. Yeah, we don't work with any uh, uh, franchise dealerships at this point. It's all independent automotive repair shops. However, not just a singular mom and pop shop, if you will, on Main Street. Um, we also do business with five national franchises, excuse me, four national franchises and a fifth one. I can't tell you who it is just yet, um, but four national franchises as of today, some of which are even publicly traded companies. So everything from a single one guy, one man operation, working on cars and talking to customers, all the way up to a shop that's in uh, Houston, Texas. They do 1.3 million in revenue per month. Have 50 technicians. They're as big as any dealership right there on I-10 in Houston. Um, Ian would have known that, but he was busy skinning the wolf while you and I were chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to share more details, and of course, uh, reach out if you have questions. You have more details in the description. Thanks very much. Have a great show. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, la, la. What? <gasps> Thanks for joining us. It was a great show. And follow us anywhere you would like on your favorite podcast, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and, of course, on our YouTube, or subscribe to our own channel.